All right, today we're going to discuss the difference between the science of the Christian life and the art of the Christian life. And if someone's never took time to look up with these uh, basic words mean science ultimately just means to know to, to have the knowledge um, it's to grasp the concept of something and the art of something is to actually have the ability or the necessary skill to apply the knowledge you know many people think they can do many things they understand the basic concepts of flying an airplane for instance or driving a semi truck mowing grass whatever it may be they've seen other people do it they understand some basics but the truth is they don't have the ability yet to perform these tasks that's the difference between the academic in the applicable aspects of of knowledge and in those types of things we can understand many things but be limited in our ability to perform in in your family in your workplace wherever it may be it's really uh, when you bring someone onto the job and you're trying to teach them, you teach them the knowledge first, and then they must apply that knowledge and show that they have the ability, they're, they're qualified. And those that are qualified can perform all things together and bring about in real time the knowledge into application. So the Christian life's really no different than that. We have hearing the word or understanding what God's word tells us. And then we have the doing or the art of how to perform. And that's why pastors have such a high standard. Pastor is not just a title from what I see in scripture that one can just really bestow upon another person. That function is, is uh, reserved for those that can walk what they talk. Show others how to bring about a fruitful Christian life and example to the flock. We as children of God should seek to grow. We should be, we should desire to come out of our, our spiritual play pens and and learn to be able to walk out the christian life a little at a time and go on to maturity that should be our heart's desire if it's not then our hearts are not right in accordance with scripture we're we're being too content and there's probably there's probably something in this world that we've latched hold on that is drawn our allegiance to something here and we're not going on to maturity, but we need to uh, try not to, to grieve this spirit. And any, any parent can understand what it means to grieve the spirit. When your child Say you're, you're correcting your child, you're disciplining your child, you're, you're trying to teach them the right way. And one of the most frustrating comments a child can come back to a parent with is, I know mom, I know dad. Showing that they have the knowledge in their mind, they understand what you desire, they understand what it is you have told them but there's a rebellion, there's an unwillingness to perform what it is according to your will. And when we see things in Scripture, and we know it's God's will for us, but yet we refuse, we make an excuse, we justify it by overusing our sinful nature or, or something to that effect, 
it's sin. God tells us to know to do good and to do it not. To each of us, that's sin, and it's based upon your knowledge. So the science is necessary prior to the art or the ability to perform. And if you have ever done construction or cooked or, or anything, you know there's a trial and error process. And the harder you work and the more devoted you are and the more you listen to the person trying to teach you, the faster you can attain those skills and take that knowledge and, and put it into practice. You may bend a few nails, you may burn a few eggs, but over time, the more you practice by exercising and using that knowledge in real time, you bring about skill and that skill brings about the desired goal and we can look at ourselves honestly and we can look at our brothers and sisters in christ this is has nothing to do with salvation the foundation of christ has been laid that person has trusted christ and we can discern the levels of maturity within ourselves and within others when you use the ruler of scripture as your guideline Little to no self-control is an evident sign of immaturity. Immature believers have little to nothing to offer you in helping you grow. And actually they can, if we're not careful, they can pull us in a reverse direction. As parents, we learn in scripture if parents would follow the biblical model, you it, it helps your child, it helps your family because parents should never reward rebellion. They should never reward selfishness. They should never reward laziness. That child has gained a reward in their rebellion and we should not add to that or enable uh, such bad behavior. We should reward hard work. We should reward obedience because those things are sacrificial in nature and the child is giving up what his personal desires may be if they're contrary to the will of, of the father or the mother to the parent. And in scripture, you see that those things that are done appropriately, the right way and for the right reasons, not so you're doing it so that others can see you. If that's your reason, you get the praise of men and therefore you've gained your reward. But if you're doing it to glorify God and out of sheer obedience and sacrificing your time, your effort, and the things that you may be uh, setting aside to do what you know God wants, those are rewardable actions. Scripture speaks so many times about us walking worthy of our vocation, walking worthy as believers, walking in the Spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, showing us ways to conquer the world ways to conquer our our own flesh you know romans 7 lays out that there is a battle raging romans 8 shows us the fix how to overcome our fleshly desires and it's to walk in the spirit for instance and then he god gives us things to look for in our christian life the fruit of the spirit if these are being manifest in your heart and in your walk, that is the fruit of the Spirit. If these other things are being manifest and that's what is manifest in your walk, you're walking in the flesh. So you, you can identify what it is you're doing and you can see the need for correction and let God's Word and the Holy Spirit draw you into the light where you can walk into the light and not fulfill the lust of the flesh and as a parent i can tell you i can see god's heart on on this i can see the apostle john's 
um, heart on this in third John chapter one, that when you see your child walk in accordance to your will, when they take your knowledge and they actually walk it out, there's such joy. There's such um, a feeling to know that that child's heart is in line with your own. And uh, we'll look at like Third John chapter 1, starting in verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. The joy that comes from seeing your children mature and grow and be able to have the uh, ability and the willingness to walk in accordance to what they know is true. Second Corinthians 7, 1 says, Having therefore these promises, speaking to Christians, Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting or bringing to completion holiness in the fear of God, knowing that we're redeemed, knowing that we're the children of God, knowing that one day we'll be risen from the dead, knowing that nothing in this world can separate us from the love that's in Christ, knowing these promises. Let's walk worthy. Let us cleanse ourselves from what our flesh tries to do to pull us away from God. You know, Colossians 1, 9 and 4 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that or for the purpose of, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That we might walk worthy. We want this knowledge, this wisdom, this spiritual understanding that or for the purpose of walking worthy and to all pleasing, not just pertaining to the gospel, but in the Christian life, in the Christian walk, going on to maturity that we can be fruitful, where we take science and turn it into an art, where we take knowing and turn it into doing, when we take selfishness and turn it into selflessness, knowing that this is the will of our Father. Giving all thanks unto the Father, Colossians 1.12, which hath made us meet or suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saint in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We have no chains holding us to this world. We have been set free. The Bible says, do not use that liberty for occasions of the flesh, but by love serve one another. 
the very trait of maturity is a believer whose will is coming in line with God's will and his walk is coming in line with God's will. Seeking to fulfill the perfect and acceptable will of God in our walk, not just in our words. Words can be cheap at times, real easy to cast, but when you want a credible testimony, you want it from somebody wise, somebody you watch that can walk what it is they talk, someone who can practice what it is they preach. Because when we preach one thing and do another, what is that? It's hypocritical. And that destroys our testimony. When we don't bridle our tongue, the Bible says our religion is vain. When we don't bridle or bring our bodies into subjection, we cheat ourselves out of being able to fulfill in our walk the knowledge that we know. We cheat ourselves out of blessings. We cheat ourselves out of rewards. And we cheat ourselves of the opportunity to honor God. And there is shame in that. And if there is no shame in that, then we have a heart problem. If bringing shame upon God does not prick us at our heart and, and drive us to, to try and do better, I believe we have our heart is not right before God and that there's something in this world that we are focused on and that will always hinder our walk. When our love for something in this world exceeds our love of Christ, it'll hinder our walk. Ephesians 4 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Pleading. And that as believers, we should plead and provoke one another into good works and provoke one another in, into maturity. And if someone is unwilling or caught in rebellion, content where they are, staying immature, we cannot force them to grow. That is a matter of their own will and their own relationship before God. It will affect their fellowship with God and it will affect fellowship with other believers who are seeking to grow up, who are wanting to go on into perfection. First John 2 28 tells us that some we have the potential to be ashamed before Christ that is coming. We believers redeemed blood bought who have forgiveness of sins, who have faith in his blood. We can still be ashamed by living carnal, self serving, self indulgent, you know, type lives in direct disobedience or rebellion before God. We are to abide in the Spirit. We are to walk in the Spirit. Abide in Him. Walk in Him. Walk in His will. And that will prevent us from being ashamed at us choosing everything in this life above Christ. Choosing everything self over Son. It says, now little children, that's believers, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence. We can come to him with a clear conscience, with a clear heart, knowing that we lived a life focused on him, in service to him, trying to apply what we know for his honor, and not be ashamed at him and his coming, not be ashamed before him. That is coming. Because we do not want to be these believers. And we all have the potential that are talked about in 1 Corinthians 3.11-15. through 15. Or excuse me, specifically those in verse 15. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. 
which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation to all things. And then our life builds on top of that. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort, of what type it is. If any man's work abides, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. The judgment seat of Christ will not be some socialist, uh, everybody gets the same thing kind of situation. Salvation is a free gift that gets you to that point. Rewards are based upon your obedience, your application of, of knowledge into doing sacrificing for God, loving others, doing things that have eternal benefit as opposed to just a selfish, self-serving, carnal life. And eternity is a long time to think, I could have done more for you, Lord. I could have tried. I may not be able to drive a nail straight, but I'm going to hit it nonetheless. I'm going to put forth the effort. I'm going to yield to your word. I'm going to humble myself because my pride is destructive. All these things to honor God, all these things to become more effective all these things and desire to grow because the reason we don't put children in front of the class is children have no place teaching children are not the ones that are showing the next generation babies are not in charge we want to become that which is beneficial to others which is mature believers if you want rewards if you seek to please him, your heavenly father, and you want to do so in all that you do, and you want to align your will with his will, and that will take sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, Romans 12. Rest knowing that you're saved. Rest knowing that you're redeemed. Rest knowing that nothing can separate you from the love that's in Christ Jesus. But go on to maturity. Seek to grow. Seek to become effective for your family, for your friends, for your fellowship, for your body of Christ that's local to you or online or wherever it may be. Seek to be something that's good for them in all ways. Don't be content with being a bad influence. Don't be content with being somebody that is hindering the walk of another person or bringing sin into their life. Don't be content with the carnal life. We have a, but a short time in this world to do whatever it is we're going to do. A very, very short time. You have most likely been a carnal Christian or you've come across carnal Christians, we all have. And you'll come across people that will put you down for trying to go on to maturity. You will come across those that try to lead you to not be a doer of the word. It's not a question of salvation. If they've trusted Christ, if they put their faith in Jesus Christ, and what he's did for them is their only way to heaven and payment for their sins. They're saved. It's not about that. It's about living a fruitful life. It's about growing on and going on to maturity. Listening to carnal believers. 
will take you away from walking in the spirit. It will lead you most likely to sin. It will lead you most likely to shame. And we, if we fall into that category, we will be doing the same thing to other people. And that's just simply wrong. And it's not right according to God's word. So something that we should hold in our minds every day is knowing that one day we will stand before Jesus Christ and we will give an account for everything that we've done in this body. And there should be a reverence there. And if there's not, the problem lies within the individual. Don't let others cheat you out of rewards. Don't let you, others cheat you out of a life that you can serve Christ in the capacity that he has skilled you and shaped you to do. Take the knowledge that God has given you and apply it. Let him give you more and learn to apply that. And let that be the cycle that you follow. Because sacrifice honors God and it's rewardable. Self-indulgence, selfishness, and sin does not honor or glorify the Son of God. So let's grow up. Let's get a handle on our mouth. Let's get a handle on our hands. Let's get a handle on our bodies. And let's become something useful knowing that we have such promises i'll mimic the words of the apostle paul as god spoke through him dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves see that rest on you and god's word shows you how to do it let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's go on to maturity. Let's not have respect of persons. If somebody's immature, they're immature. If somebody is mature, listen to their counsel. Let them show you. Let them help you. Because the only thing that would come between you and that would be pride. So now we learn the science of what God wants, the knowledge of his will for our life. Let's become artists, doers, and not just hearers of the word. Let's put into practice what we preach. And not just sit around and sound like a bunch, another religious clique who talks a good game, who talks a lot of things, but who would not lift a finger to apply what it is they say they know and believe. So, may God help us in, in that goal. Until next time, take care, and God bless you all, saints.